Hello and welcome to day eight of our personal leadership challenge. Have you ever been in a situation where you've seen perhaps a team member or someone in your organization behaving in a strange way, behaving in a way that you thought perhaps is not the right thing to actually do? You might have a, a wonderful set of values in the organization around say collaboration and perhaps you, you see people not working in a collaborative way. Has that ever happened? Uh, or perhaps you've been in a meeting where you've agreed things or you think you've agreed things and you've agreed a certain set of activities that people have agreed to go and do after the meeting and then the meeting finishes and then a week or so later you wonder why perhaps they haven't done those activities or perhaps why certain decisions are being made in the organization. So what I'd like to do on day eight is to really share with you my thoughts around the topic of systems leadership and systems thinking. And what is it really about and, and how does that impact on us and, and what can we do about it as leaders to make sure we have the right system in place to drive the right behavior and the right activity to get the results we want. So let's have a look at that in detail and share some ideas and thoughts around what it really means to us. So let's have a look at what system thinking is really all about. As leaders, one of our roles is to create a high performance environment where success is inevitable. So I have to be really clear, of course, what results do I want to achieve? Whether it's for an organization or whether it's for my team or, or whether it's for me personally. In order to get the results we want, of course, the two things that combine to achieve those results are number one is the activity that we or, or the team do and of course the behavior. And it's the behavior and the activity that combine together in order to deliver the results we need. So can I really tell people how to behave? You know, can I tell people what to do? I can, but really what I want is I want people to want to behave and choose to behave in the right way. I want people to be able to want to do the activities that need to be done. So what I have to do as a leader is to be able to create a system, an organizational system or a team system that's gonna drive the right behavior and drive the right activity. So, Let's have a look at what that really means. What that means is I need to go right to the top here and start to give the organization or my team some direction. And this call, of course, starts with what we call our purpose. So whether that's an organizational purpose or whether that's a team purpose or whether it's my personal purpose, whatever level we're doing this at, it's really important to understand what our why is. Then, of course, we can then break that down into you know, what we need to deliver. So these would be our strategic goals in an organization, what are our top level goals that we need to deliver. We would then break these down, wouldn't we, into a set of objectives or key result areas or OKRs or whatever you want to use in your organization, which would then drive the right activity. So at whatever level we're at, it's actually broken down right down to what is it I need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis in order to get the results we want. So this is what we call a strategic arm. So the strategic arm. So the what we need to do. And then of course the other side of the system is around how do I make sure I drive the right behavior? Well this starts really in an organizational context really are being really clear what our values are. Uh, and this is particularly important in a fast moving changing environment just like now where we need to hold on to something that's true. So if we know what our why is, we know what our how, we know what our values are, then we can hold on to these, can't we? And then our goals might change, the activity and objectives we have and what we do might change depending on the situation we're in, but our purpose and values are gonna stay pretty rock solid. So the values are really gonna drive our ways of working or working practices. And these practices are then gonna drive our behavior. So I gave an example previously about the New Zealand All Blacks from a sporting context is that their value is humility. Their working practice or principle is around sweeping the shed and that drives the right behavior, which means I am gonna clean the dressing room at the end of the match, which gives us the results we actually want. So this is what we call the cultural arm. And I introduced this on the uh, strategic planning uh, module. Um, we talked about the importance of getting the strategy right, which is where we are now to where we want to get to, which is all this bit here. And this bit over here, which is the cultural bit. Uh, and this is about how we operate. So 
this is the what we need to do. This is why we do it. And this is the how we work in order to achieve our results. Now, of course, what we then need to do is create a support structure that's going to drive and make all this work. And it's all aligned. So things like uh, the leadership behavior of the senior team. You know, what's our leadership framework or leadership model? What type of leaders do we have in our business? It might be things like the office environment. It could be your IT. It could be your reward strategy. It could be your recruitment. It could be the whole marketing aspect. Yeah, and it goes on and on in terms of all the support functions we have in an organization. And these needs to be aligned, don't they, in order to be able to drive the way we operate. Now, what's really important about this is, from a behavioral point of view and an activity point of view, that question I asked at the start around well, whether you see people behaving in strange ways or doing things or not doing things that you should be doing, often it's down to the system that we've created. So let me give an example of that. Let's say that um, we have, I don't know, a, um, a, value, a value up here of collaboration or, or team working. So we've got this team working, it's all about teams up here. And uh, we practice working in teams. Um, but for some reason, uh, people are behaving in a, an individual way. Have you ever seen that? Where people are quite competitive and they're working individually in there. What we tend to do is we send them away on team building courses, don't we? And say, look, it's all about collaboration, it's all about team working. Go away on this course and come back as an effective team. And they come back and, of course, they, <laughs> and they sort of, after they enjoyed themselves and uh, that's died down, they go back to how they were before. If we do some causal analysis and, and try to understand why are people choosing to behave that way? What we'll find is there's probably a misalignment somewhere in the system. And let's say, for example, if we uh, rewarded people individually, and let's say we set uh, individual objectives and we measured people individually here and we rewarded them individually, how do you think they're gonna behave? They are gonna behave, aren't they, in an individual way? So we have a system that is in balance. And this is, I think, the beauty of thinking as a leader, uh, thinking about the system and using system thinking really to really understand what's actually going on in your organization. Because I know we use this a lot around understanding why are people behaving in different ways. So if I was to change the reward structure to say individual and team-based and to have individual and team-based objective setting over here, key result areas, K K OKRs, then of course, What's really interesting about that, that's going to that's gonna change the way people behave and probably change the activity they do. Does that make sense? And that's just one example of how the system you know, could be misaligned, driving the wrong, the wrong behavior. So my views of this really is when you look at this really, the system I've created here is that this is almost the output of the system. So this stuff, this stuff will happen. So all I can do as a leader is really observe this. Are people doing the right things? Are they behaving the right way and are we getting the right results? And if that's yes, 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 then clearly we've got the right system in place. If there's something not quite right, then clearly the system that we've created, so this bit here, when you think about this bit over here, this bit here is what we actually create. That's what we create in a, in a, in a, a collaborative way. So we, we create the objectives, we create the support systems that make it all work and we then make sure we've got the right working in practice in place to drive the right behavior and right activity. And as a, if you're on a leadership team, what we do then is this is where we give direction. So the direction comes up here in terms of, these are our top level goals, this is our purpose, these are our values. This is our, our why, this is our how, uh, and this is our what. Now what's really interesting about that is that when you create this direction, uh, and we talked on the very first module around the importance of empowerment, in this new world. Empowerment really requires three things, direction, autonomy, and support. So if we think about you know, creating this high performance environment, creating this right system in this way, what happens of course, we start to create an environment where people can be empowered because if I'm working in this system and I know what our purpose is, I know what our goals are, I know what our values are, then that starts to become my decision making process, doesn't it? It starts to help me to be able to operate really quickly because if I'm about to do something and I ask myself, you know, does that align to our purpose? Yes, it does. Does it align to our goals? Yep, I can clearly see how that aligns to my goals um, or our goals as an organization. And does it, does it fit with our values? Yes, it does, quite clearly. So it supports all those three things. So I don't need to ask permission. I just need to execute and get on. And, and it speeds up 
the way we operate. And once we create this direction and we actually create this middle bit in, in a collaborative way, we start to get to this whole area of building trust, don't we? When we build trust, of course, what happens is the whole system speeds up and actually our costs start to reduce. So we don't need to have so many checks and balances and reporting and meetings and all that sort of stuff that gets in the way of us delivering stuff in a really agile and really quick way. So this systems thinking is a really good way to start to practice and start to think about what is the system that we've created in our organization. Now, from an organization point of view, that could be really big to think about. So maybe start off thinking about this as you, as a leader, and think about what is it the results I need to achieve? And then go back to my purpose, have a look at your values, have a look at your goals, make sure they're all aligned, and then make sure that you then set up the system that's gonna drive the right activity and the right behavior for you to achieve the results that you want to achieve. So that's my view of system thinking. So on the next module, we're gonna have a look at how we create momentum. Once we've got the right system in place, how do, we, how do we create that flywheel? How do we get that momentum going? How do you actually get things really building and building and building? So we're delivering amazing stuff. And we're gonna look at that importance of reviewing, uh, reflecting, learning, and growing. And I've got some really good insights and ideas about how you can do that. So until that moment, have a think about the system you've created, reflect on that, and I will see you tomorrow, and we'll have a look at how we create momentum.